Good evening, everybody. This is uh, Roy Ryer from SEO Training SW.com and the SEO Roadmap. Um, really excited this evening. We have a uh, one of our associates, Jeanette Degner, and she has a really special uh, webinar uh, for us tonight. It's uh, going to be discussing uh, WordPress plugins, and uh, we'll get started here in a second as more and more people get in. We have about uh, just under 100 people uh, signed up for tonight's call. Um, the way we typically run our webinars, for those that have never been on it, uh, you know, during the course of the call, if you have any comments or questions, there's a little uh, chat box or question box. You can type in your message. And just type in any of messages, any comments that you might have. And towards the end of the uh, webinar, after the, uh, Jeanette uh, gets her presentation, Jeanette will answer any questions that you do have. Uh, and we're going to try to stay focused tonight. Uh, we're going to try to stay focused on just some, you know, the WordPress uh, plugins and anything basically that has to be uh, has to go on with uh, WordPress. Uh, just a couple of announcements uh, I want to make prior to we uh, get do get started. Uh, here I don't I was planning on having it up on the website, but just because uh, things didn't work out the way they do uh, when you try to edit a page, uh, the, we'll post that either later tonight or early tomorrow. We're going to have a special webinar scheduled for J July. Uh, let me look at July 12th. So if you want to mark it down in your calendar, July 12th at 4 o'clock Pacific, uh, Chris Lang, uh, who's been kind of nicknamed the Nostradamus of Google, he's going to be giving a presentation on Google+. And I, David, myself, uh, and Stephen um, were on the call with him uh, earlier this morning. He showed us some stuff that basically blew us away, some stuff we didn't even know about. And uh, he's going to share that with you during that webinar. And again, that's going to be on July 12th. Uh, we'll email everybody. Uh, so if you guys like to participate in that webinar, uh, you can and sign up. Also, this webinar is going to be recorded. Uh, it typically takes us about 48 hours to 72 hours to render the video, uh, things we need to do to the video to put it up online. Uh, so you know, if you uh, do miss portions of this, don't feel bad. We'll have it up on the website. It's just not going to be live, and you're not going to be able to ask any particular questions. However, you can make comments. So if you're viewing this video record mode after we publish it on our website, if you do have any comments or questions, just use the little comment area below, and we'll certainly get back with you. Um, I'm just trying to think of uh, any other special announcements we got. Oh, just a couple you know, little, little things, those of you uh, you know, we do have some free SEO tips uh, here on our website. We've got a lot of great webinars uh, that we've had in the past. So if you just put your mouse over the SEO tips, uh, you'll see, uh, you know, the, our posts and our, a lot of our videos. And those of you that, you know, like to uh, attend our SEO training, uh, our workshops, we have our workshops here on the left. We have the two-day workshop and the three-day. Uh, we're not going to have those again until September. A little too hot here in Arizona, uh, uh, and personally, I like to go on vacation. We just have some vacation scheduling problems. We're going to launch those again in September, and we're going to have some. Uh, we're also going to have a Google Plus workshop, a one-day workshop, working out of the details on that. And of course, we have our SEO training to go. We have all our videos from our workshops uh, available here, where you can purchase them. We have our Essentials workshop, which is basically the two-day class. Um, the three-day class, which is the advanced class, and we have our local search. Uh, so it's basically like, you know, you don't have to drive or fly all the way out to Arizona if you're out there on the East Coast. Uh, just like sitting here in one of our classes, then you can participate. You also have a coaching session. Um, Dave, whose photograph is up here, he uh, manages the, uh, the coaching. You have one month free of coaching, uh, unless you buy the the all-in-one pack, the master collection, then you have three months of uh, free coaching. But if you have any questions about any of this, uh, any of our training, please don't hesitate and call on us. I know our 800 number, um, for some reason, wasn't working this morning. Um, it should be back online uh, sometime later today, uh, if it's not already. But if you, you know, want, you just use that contact page and contact us directly. Directly, but I'm really excited. Uh, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Jeanette. Jeanette, I have met. Gosh, Jeanette, what's? It seems like ages ago we met. Uh, 
it was back in just after I launched uh, the SEO training, uh, or not the SEO training, the uh, my radar detector website, and after I got smacked down by Google back in 2001, um, I attended uh, the Search Engine Academy workshop up in Las Vegas to learn all the stuff, search engine optimization. And Jeanette was actually my one of my first teachers, and Jeanette's been in this business, you know, for a very, very long time, and uh, you know, involved in SEO, internet marketing. Uh, affiliate marketing. So you, you know, and we brought her aboard. We're partners with the SEO training, SW.com, the SEO roadmap. So uh, she has, she's a wealth of knowledge. She knows her stuff. Guys, if you have any questions at all on WordPress, you know, please ask them uh, to her because she's going to be more than happy to answer any type of questions you have. And this is, you know, really great. Though typically, you know, websites come out with their top. 10 WordPress plugins in the beginning of the year. Well, this is the middle of the year. And Jeanette find, found five SEO plugins that are really great and really fantastic. So Jeanette, take it away, and uh, thank you for being on the call tonight. Thank you. OK. Um, oh, I think you need to give yeah, you I need to give here. you a screen, yeah. Change presenter. Let me do that right now. Jeanette, and I'll be changing Jeanette, and she'll be the presenter. And I'm going to mute my mic for right now. So I'll be muting. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, I can. I just muted myself. But yeah, I can. Roy? Yeah, I see your screen. Do you hear me? Okay, okay. I had muted myself. <clears throat> Excuse yeah, I me. Yeah, you're just fine. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Um, <clears throat> WordPress plugins add more functionality to WordPress. And one of the things that um, you know we've found over the years is there are some WordPress plugins that you shouldn't have installed um, because they have third-party links in them, and that has been causing problems as of lately. Uh, one of the ones that uh, has been mentioned quite a bit is the Add to Any, and uh, so that's one that I actually don't recommend that you install. Uh, you'll get a nasty gram from Google, or I have, um, because I have these plugins installed. Um, that uh, told me that I had uh, uh, spyware or I was being hacked. Uh, once we removed the plugins, we cleared up the problem. And uh, so we're going to go over five plugins today that I use on almost every site. Uh, a couple of them are brand new and uh, just came out, so we'll be trying to configure them. Uh, one of them I can't configure for you live, but I can show you how to get it done. And that's the new Facebook plugin. Um, the first thing we do is I uh, want to go ahead and, for those of you who don't know how to install plugins, and I'm just going to assume that not everybody does, is you go to your plugins area, you click on Add New, and we do a search. Uh, the plugin we're going to add in is the Cool Offer Box. And there it is right there. And we literally just click Install Now, tell it yes, and then activate the plugin. And what Cool Offer Box does is it adds information about the author to the bottom of the content posts and pages. The information is actually gathered from the profile that you set um, in WordPress. So if you go to the general settings, and your email address is there, and then your website's there. You'll see that um, it, it shows you as the users. And go to Cool Author Box, and we just tilt our display box on pages and posts. You can have it either way. I usually just like it on the posts themselves, and we save the changes. And um, this is actually what it looks like here. If you scroll down, you can see uh, uh, you have places to put the HTML there, but it has Roy's website, and it actually leads us back to um, his uh, About Us page for Radar Roy. And what we've done is um, we actually add a relative author link in this. Um, because Google's looking for the author for a particular to identify 
uh, your posts and pages to you. And you can actually um, make that link actually go to your Google Plus, or you can profile, or you can have it go to your About Me page, one of the two. We're working with a clean blog here, so not everything's up on here. And one of the next plugins we like to use is um, Yoast, SDA, Yoast SEO, which is an all-in-one um, complete WordPress plugin that exists. Um, it lets you do everything from your site maps to your titles and meta descriptions. So if we go to posts and we click on add new, dun, dun, dun. there we go. If you scroll down, you'll see um, everything from Yoast SEO. So we can actually have our snippet previews here, and you can actually find related keywords as you put it in there. So if we did antelope, what is this blog about, Roy? Um, you can see that it comes up with a bunch of different words and phrases that um, are related to antelope. It'll actually score your titles and your descriptions. And then um, you can go to page analysis. And you can, once you pick a keyword that it's supposed to be associated with, it will give you um, what you're looking for. The idea behind it is it actually helps optimize your pages for content, your image titles, your meta descriptions. Um, when we install this plugin, the first place we go is to XML sitemaps because we want to create one. And you go ahead and check this box to enable the sitemap functionality. And then you can click there to see where the sitemap index is and it'll show you all the sitemaps that it's created. And this is the page that you'll actually give Google, or at least Google Webmaster Tools. And you'll want to go ahead and check mark the box ping Yahoo and ping ask.com. Um, if there's a post type that you don't want to include in your sitemap, like media or particular posts or pages, um, you can check mark the boxes here. I usually don't check mark those boxes. I want everything in there. And then um, if there's a taxonomy that you don't want included in your sitemap, like let's say the categories, or you don't want the tags included in the sitemap, um, you can check mark those boxes as well. Um, usually this isn't necessary. But in the permalink settings, um, you can actually strip the category base from the category URLs. Um, and you can, you can also enforce a trailing slash on all categories and tags. Um, if you choose the permalink for your posts with the HTML or anything else on the end, it'll force WordPress to add a trailing slash to non-post pages. Um, we usually don't check mark any of these. and. Um, we usually leave this just fine. In the canonical settings, or we leave to, def to the default um, because your blog can run either under both, so you don't have to worry about that. In the RSS, there's a neat little feature that allows you to put content before or after each post in the field. And um, usually what we'll do is we'll do um, the, the blog link description first. And we'll go ahead and put that on before the post on every field on the feed. And so that'll allow when the feeds come in and other people take your feed, um, you're going to have the blog and the description and a link back to your site with the blog site's name and description as your anchor text. Um, and then you can also have a, have a, I usually put the author link as the uh, content to put after each post. 
and we save the changes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> if you're doing any kind of affiliate marketing, or if you're doing any kind of um, um, link building, or you're trying to track links back and forth to go through your websites, uh, one of the plugins we suggest very highly is called Pretty Link. Now there's a pro version and a light version. The light version is free, and um, they have a video that actually takes you through a tutorial for, for doing it. But um, the really simple thing is, is you just click on Add Pretty Link, and this allows you to create your own shortened um, versions of URLs uh, to go back to your site. If you're putting out a PDF or any kind of ebook, these are the kind of links that I suggest you use because you can change the target URL at any time because it puts it in a database. So you can actually shorten your links using your own domain in a pose of, in, instead of using another link shrinking service. And it creates clean links and it tracks each hit to your URL and provides a full detailed report of where the hit came from, the browser, OS, and host. It's a great plugin for people who want to clean up their affiliate links or track links from emails or their links on Twitter to come to their own domain or generally increase the reach of their website by spreading these links on forums or comments on other blogs. So um, you can actually create a uh, a group for, for each type of um, post that you're, or link that you want to create. Uh, there are SEO options. You can actually no follow a link if you don't want it to be. Uh, for affiliate links, that's usually a good idea is to create a no follow so you don't have to worry about it. And you can determine whether or not you want to track hits on that particular link. Um, in the advanced section, that's pretty much the uh, pro version. Um, it'll do keyword replacements um, to where you can tell it what word you want to have a link to it all the time, and you can limit how many times that word actually gets done. Um, be careful with this particular option uh, because too many um, links with a particular anchor text um, can cause you problems later on. So you really only want to do no more than two. And um, it's usually a good idea to clear out your um, hits older than 30 days. And um, I usually will, will come in and do that so I don't have to worry about it for, for uh, tracking purposes in my databases to keep them clean. But that's what Pretty Link does, and that's one of the plugins we recommend for you. One of the other ones I want to talk about is GD Star Rating. Um, if you've ever seen... Uh, rich snippets which Google has allowed on their websites um, and you've seen the star rating below the title in Google, that's what this is from. It's from GD Star Rating. And um, they've actually taken advantage of uh, the rich snippet Google's introduced and you can add this rating system to your site uh, with this particular plugin. So it'll add like little stars um, you just pretty much go down to to my ratings, and you can um, you can see the, the latest uh, posts that you have, the statistics on the votes and uh, comments and votes from different posts. When you go to settings, um, there really isn't a whole lot you, you need to worry about. Um, I don't worry about, uh, most of the defaults are actually just perfect for you. You don't have to worry about them. Um, if you have support for cache plugins or dynamic loading of data, you can activate the cache support. Um, 
but if I usually don't recommend using a cache system inside WordPress, it has its own issues that, that um, happen when you're trying to do updates live, and you need to make sure you turn it off when you're doing updates or installing plugins. So there's not much to actually change through here. And you can auto insert the code. You can right now it's set for both individual posts and individual pages. Um, I usually uncheck for individual pages because I don't need them for the pages. I just want them for the individual posts. And here you can see the ratings already installed. So you can actually go in and give it a rating. And the same thing over here at SEO training, we have the rating system set up. So it gives you an opportunity to go in and actually rate um, and cast your votes for different posts and, and things that are going on. When you see more stars on there, those stars will actually appear on your um, search engine uh, descriptions from Google in the snippet previews. And one of the other plugins I want to show you is brand new. Um, Facebook actually came out with its own um, official plugin that allows bloggers to post to Facebook and to tag their friends and pages at the same time that they post. Uh, this is a interesting new plugin because it makes your website completely social. Um, Facebook's introduced this and, and it um, promises it'll make your blog and WordPress Power website deeply social. Once installed and configured, the plugin makes your website function almost as an extension of Facebook. Every time you publish a blog post, you can simultaneously publish a link and summary about that post to Facebook. And you can publish these to your personal profile, a Facebook business page, or both. Adding a status message to go with the link through the WordPress interface. You can also tag your posts with references to Facebook friends and other people's pages, cross-posting your pages in the process. Um, at the same time, you can turn on Facebook integration features for your website, public pages, and posts such as the like and the send buttons. Um, the only thing you have to do to configure this is you actually have to go to uh, the link right here and create a new app and you'll see a dialog like this. And um, you go ahead and put in your app name which is just your WordPress blog and then uh, the namespace that you want it to be. And you go ahead and click continue. Um, and then you're going to get a new um, screen and it'll give you an app ID and an, and an app secret ID uh, that you have to paste, cut and paste into the basic info right down here. But once you fill all this out, you add your domain name to it. Um, there's categories, so if your blog falls into a different category or, or than what they have, you can list it under whatever you want. Um, it doesn't really matter. And then be sure and fill out the site URL, which is your website, your, your blog. And when it's completed, um, it actually looks like this. And in this case, we actually have the um, comments turned on. So somebody logged into Facebook can actually post a comment on your site. And there is a interface for uh, moder moderating comments inside the Facebook system uh, in WordPress itself. They also have a likes and then there's a like button down here that floats as you go. It just stays there at the bottom and then it puts a like at the top as well. But the cool part about this plugin is made by Facebook and it's designed to really um, get users interacting with your blog back and forth, uh, which is your whole goal. That's what you want is you want a lot more user interaction. And the last plugin that we like to talk about is um, Inbound Writer. 
what Inbound Writer does is it's, it's, com it's content optimization at your fingertips. So uh, when we create posts, we click Add New, you'll see Inbound Writer right here. And you click on Get Started, and you give it your starting term. So we can give it um, cantaloupes. You click Start Research. Whoops, sorry, I got to put in three terms. And what it'll do is actually pull in information from other blog sources, um, <clears throat> other articles, tweets, and reviews, and um, to learn more to, about your particular topic. And this will help you create a blog post that will actually be more optimized without over-optimizing it. Um, because you're going to be using the words and phrases that your customers use um, but you're still creating readable and engaging material for your audience. The Inbound Writer application actually delivers insights from, from a variety of sources, including social media networks and other sources across the web. Um, during the writing process, <coughs> it helps ensure the quality of your content as it was intended by the writer uh, for the optimal balance between content integrity and content optimization. So you get a nice, easy balance between the two. Um, it's designed for writers, marketers, and editors uh, to perform content optimization without actually having to worry about stuffing keywords or which words are right for you because it's going to give you um, a list back showing you exactly what's out there currently in the web. And you'll actually receive a score. You'll see the little score meter right here as you write on the blog, um, it'll give you a score and then it'll tell you uh, what you need to do to increase your score to get it better and what you're shooting for is in the green over here. And then you'll see a bunch of different relevant terms that it's got. So like deer, mule deer, national parks, white teal deer, bow hunting, turkey hunting, uh, hunter safety course, pronghorn antelope, wildlife man. And if you click on them, uh, it'll give you the excerpts from each one of the places that you're looking for. And you can do further searches on reference.com, Wikipedia, or Google. And as you actually write, you're actually going to see relevant terms move into the area where my mouse is. Um, these are the focus terms that you're going to be working with. It means you have used these terms at least five times uh, because the emphasis on your document, uh, inbound writer perceives these items as being particularly important. And um, creating focus, focus terms is a great way to improve your score depending on the length of your document. You may need one to three focus terms to actually work with. Dun, dun, dun.
and as you write it, it will actually show you um, that you've actually used it once as you go through and it shows you the different words that are related to your relevant terms. One of the nice parts about this is you can take this and copy and link copy links that are there and paste them into your um, blog on the fly. So you can actually reference other people's articles and other people's um, content while you're working. So those are my five plugins that I like to use. Um, I want to go back to Cool Author Box really quick. With uh, Cool Author Box, it actually uses Gravatars. Um, let's see here. And the Gravatar is always associated with uh, the email address that you have for the particular user. So each user or subscriber or person that actually um, goes into your website and, and if you're going to have multiple authors, they can have their own avatar. Um, you just have to get them set up on Gravatar first. Once you have them set up on Gravatar, uh, their image will actually automatically appear down here in this little box. And it allows you to see all the posts by a particular author just by looking at the box itself. So Roy, any comments or questions? Hold on, I'm sorry, Jeanette, I was on mute. Yeah, we got a number of questions here, um, and if you do have any other questions, uh, please type them in, and uh, we'll go through all these. I have a uh, question here from Giselle. Uh, Giselle, can you do more than one? Uh, I'm not sure which one she's, uh, which plugin she's talking about, but she's asking, can you do more than one, like, for static pages? Uh, I'm not sure which plugin she was referring to. Uh, Giselle, if you could clarify that. Um, now, this is a question from Michael Smith. He's asking, how uh, can you show us how to put the photo in an author box? Yeah, you you actually. Um, it's gonna be easier if I do it this way. You go to users, all users, and you'll see that I'm using Gravatar. And so some people actually have their their pictures as part of it. You click on your profile. And under your profile in, in the contact info, You'll use your email address that's associated with your Gravatar account, which you can set up for free. And it's just at gravatar.com. And under the website, we actually have it going to the About Us. And we have the REL author tag. And it's not showing me all of it. Jen, maybe if you could copy that and then put paste it into a uh, a text document yeah, I'm that going way. To. 
edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> but this is actually what it looks like. Um, we just have it set to our about page, and then it's question mark REL equals author. So we add that tag into there. And that's actually what we put under our website for our contact info. So for each one of you, you should have a profile that you um, can edit. And we got another question. Does Yoast replace the all-in-one SEO plugin? And this is from Michael again. Uh, yes, Yoast replaces the all-in-one SEO plugin. Uh, we much prefer Yoast over it. It's much cleaner to use. Uh, it gives you a better idea of how you're doing when you're writing titles and descriptions. Um, it's also, uh, it creates the XML site maps for you so you don't have to add an additional plugin for it. Um, Go back to this one. Um, it also helps you with the RSS feed so you can optimize them for yourself, which is what we did here where we um, put the blog uh, link and description in here for the RSS feeds and the author link at the bottom. Um, there are files to edit. So if you wanted to edit your HT access file, or you wanted to um, do a little bit more configuration, you could. Okay. And uh, can you have the can you have Facebook on more than one page? And this is from Giselle. Yes, the the Facebook piece can go on more than one page and more than one blog. Um, you just have to do the application uh, ID for each different uh, website URL that you're working with. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, uh, Giselle, if you, have, if you still have questions, just type it in the search box. I'll get that. Um, this is from Roger. Again, uh, does the cool author box generate a thumbnail picture and stars in the local SERPs and um, in Google? Uh, no, actually, uh, what happens is if you go to your Google Plus account and in the About You, um, you add your um, URLs in there, it actually takes that picture and that's what's generated. Okay. Uh, this is from Phil Smith. I've tried using the Yoast SEO plugin, but I get an error result in a stuck browser due to looping URLs. Have you experienced this bug? Um, maybe no. Stephen... Uh, Stephen, do you have any comments? Stephen's our programmer. I know he's on uh, the call. His mic's on mute. Stephen, do you have any suggestions on that? Uh, well, what I would do in a situation like that is turn off every other plugin, turn on Yoast, uh, see if you get the error. Most likely you won't. And then turn them on because it, it sounds more like you have a conflict between one other plugin and the, the Yoast all in one, uh, not all in one, the Yoast SEO plugin. Okay. Uh, which is which is common, unfortunately. So just to repeat what Stephen said is just basically shut everything down other than your Yoast SEO plugin. See if it you're still having that looping problem. And if you're not, just one by one turn them on. That way you can figure out which you know which one is the conflicting URL. Um couple uh this is from uh, Perry Smith, he's from Asia. And he's interested in uh, purchasing our SEO training USB uh, videos. And will there be any problem mailing it to Asia? No, in fact, we mailed out today to Germany, to Sweden, and to the UK just today. Um, so, yeah, we, we have shipped to the uh, Asia. Just, uh, you'll just you know, put in your credit, credit card information into the shopping cart. Uh, if you do have any problems, just email me directly. Uh, but, yeah, we ship out to Asia. If we replace the uh, Jeanette, if you, we replace the all in one SEO with Yoast, will it affect existing posts and pages? 
Yes. Yeah, you're gonna have, basically going to have to go in and edit those out uh, or, you know, add new information into those. Or there's a, if I remember correctly, I didn't have luck when I tried to use it, but there was there's a tool that Yoast has that will uh, integrate any of your, uh, your all-in-one SEO with Yoast. But when I tried it, it didn't work. Stephen, you have any comments on that? Have you tried that? I have tried it in the past. Um, it did work for me. The one thing I would always recommend is make sure you back up your database before you do anything. Uh, okay. There's quite a few different plugins out there to do that. Okay. Um, we did just yeah, some, uh, I've, done, I've done it on you know two or three blogs. I didn't have any problems with it. I did have a problem on one other blog that I did it on. Okay. Uh, whereas it didn't pull everything in. And uh, we have a question here. Jeanette's last name, Jeanette Degner. Uh, that's Degner's her last name. Uh, Jeanette's up in Las Vegas. Yeah. yeah. It's D E G N E R. And uh, she lives up in Las Vegas. So if you're up in Vegas, you know, uh, send her an email. <laughs> no, you can send her an email anywhere. Uh, uh, Jeanette, Jeanette's email is Jeanette at SEO training SW.com, by the way, too, if somebody wants to send her a direct email. Um, what theme companies do you like and why? This is from uh, Roger Matthews. Any particular theme? Th excuse me, I get hiccups. That's okay. Um, I like the Catalyst themes. Um, I like a lot of the Flex themes because they're easy to install and they have uh, squeeze pages and a lot of different um, options for you to play with. Um, I also use just... Um, the latest uh, WordPress theme for for some of my projects, uh, just because it's clean, they've added a couple new features with 3.4 um, to where you can change the headers around and um, change the image sizes on this header piece right here. And so I'm they, not. They've added some little tweaks that we can work with. I got a question here from Kara. Uh, she's asking what plugin. She didn't catch the name. Jeanette, could you kind of just maybe go over the, the plugins we went over uh, tonight, the names? Sure. The first, the first plugin is Yoast SEO. Mm -hmm. The second plugin is Inbound Writer. And Inbound Writer is both free and paid. Uh, the free version um, just puts a little Inbound Writer link at the bottom of your posts. Um, the paid version is like $19 a month, but it's well worth it if you have a blog that you're really trying to get out there and get um, traffic for particular keywords and need help with content um, because you're looking at a, a tool that will actually give you at your fingertips additional content and other resources to pull information from. Okay. Uh, question here about the other one is uh, oh, go ahead. Still, okay. is, uh, cool cool author box. Uh, that's the plugin that adds information about the author to the bottom of your content posts and pages. And um, the other one is the official Facebook plugin. Uh, you can actually just do a search in in uh, your uh, plugins for Facebook, and it comes up first. The other one we look at is called Pretty Links Light. There's a paid and, and a free version. It allows you to shorten your list using your own domain name and track them. And the other one we use is GD Star Rating. Uh, that's the one that um, you'll see the star ratings actually underneath in the rich snippets that Google picks up. So you can add a rating system to your site with this particular plugin. Okay, um, Jeanette. Question about the uh, themes again. Uh, question about the Woo W O O theme and Builder theme. I'm not familiar with them, Jeanette. Are you? I'm familiar with Woo themes. Um, I don't use them on my particular websites. Um, no real reason except I just I like uh, the Catalyst themes, and I like the. Um, uh, flex themes the most. Okay, and uh, any plugins you would recommend to back up your WordPress website? This is, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I lost the name, but oh, okay, this is from Roger. 
um, asking what type of backup program. Oh, God, that'd be a s I'm sorry? Steven? I've got yeah, a Steven I, question. I'm trying to find a name for it right now. I'm, I'm working in mine. Uh, what we use it uh, while Stephen's looking for the, the notes. We, you know, we our server uh, basically everything that's on our server is backed up. So you know, we have a, a separate backup uh, system for our server. So anything that's on our server gets backed up on the fly. So if we do lose something, we have just giga 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 gigabytes of uh, information. We could go back months and months and months. Uh, so that's how we do our backups uh, for you know anything on our server. You know, it might be a little cost restrictive for some people to do that, and there are some programs out there. The only thing I'm going to recommend uh, before, before Stephen does this, um, you know, many people you know, just will back up their WordPress website or forget to back up their WordPress database or vice versa or their images, all right? Uh, if you just pack up your WordPress uh, database, uh, your images are not going to be backed up in that. And so all the, you know, what you'll have are you know, a lot of broken images and anything you put up there. So when you do backup, you might want to consider doing a full backup. Uh, cPanel uh, is another way you can do that. Just if you have your site hosted on cPanel, you could uh, basically back up your entire website and then back up your entire database. It will be two separate files. Stephen, did you find anything per se? Yeah, the one I usually install on all the sites is wp-db manager. Um, what you can do with this one is you can have it automatically email you a backup copy of the database, uh, which I, I do that on a lot of the sites so that I don't have to think about it. And again, that's only your database that's right. being backed up. Uh, so I just want to, you know, because you know, I've had people just, you know, oh, okay, I got a backup, and they back up their database, but all their images are, you know, lost, all their themes are gone, they had a custom theme design. So they don't have their theme, and they don't have their uh, images. Uh, that's not going to be saved in the, uh, a database program. So you know, please make sure you download those and you keep those. Um, and let me see if there's any new questions that came in here. Um, I think we just about got everybody's question asked here. Uh, really great webinar. Uh, we had quite a few people on the call tonight. We're going to have a replay of the webinar. Um, there's uh, I still don't have, there's a problem with Webinar Bridge right now, and I got to get the, the bug worked out with Webinar Bridge, which is an SEO, uh, it's not an SEO plugin, but it's a WordPress plugin that integrates with uh, GoToWebinar. And so, uh, Randy, I saw that you signed up, and I saw a couple other people that signed up for the, uh, the Google Plus webinar with Chris Lang. I deleted your names, guys, uh, because it's just not working right right now. When I get that up, I'll send everybody out an email. Uh, if you'd like to register for that, it's going to be a really good uh, webinar. Chris has a lot of great information. Stuff he just blew me away on today. Uh, <coughs> and it, <clears throat> excuse me. And that's going to be on the uh, 12th of July, uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon Pacific time, uh, which is also the same time for those of you that are out here in Arizona. Uh, Jeanette, do you have anything in closing? Uh, no, in, in closing, there's actually, you know, not you don't have to over... <clears throat> add a bunch of plugins into your website. You really want to keep it as simple as you possibly can um, so that you do cr you know, prevent some problems from cropping up, um, especially when some plugins may uh, interact with the others badly. So always try and make sure you've uh, installed your latest versions of your plugin and the latest version of WordPress um, before you go forward with adding any additional plugins to your site. Very good. Stephen, anything you'd like to add in closing? Um, no, I just want to you know, reemphasize what Jeanette said, because I've seen a lot of instances where you know, people tell me they have big problems on their website, and you, you go in there and they have you know, 20 different plugins for, for stuff you really don't need. Uh, you know, I try to keep the plugins at a minimum. Uh, you know, the majority of my sites all only have five or six plugins at the most, uh, and they are basically the ones that Jeanette just, just spoke about. Um, aside from that, you know, just back up everything. Uh, back to another question about themes. Uh, the two that I personally like are WooThemes and uh, Genesis, which is by StudioPress. Um, I believe, you know, they have some nice stuff out there. Uh, it's, you know, it's just a matter of what your interest is and um, your style. And that is all I have. Very good. And uh, guys, you know, I uh, 
I thank everybody for being on the uh, webinar tonight. Uh, it was very informative. Jeanette, thank you. Great job you did tonight. Stephen, thank you for helping out again tonight. And guys, uh, those of you that joined us tonight, I thank you for coming. And uh, if you have any comments, questions, you know, email myself, email Jeanette. Uh, when we have this up on the website, you know, uh, please post any comments, suggestions. And hey, guys, uh, thanks for being on the call tonight. This is uh, Roy Ryer from SEO Training with Jeanette Degner and Stephen Farino. Uh, guys, thanks. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.